I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and Bible journaler here on YouTube. And today I'm going to take this page that's in my Bible and do somewhat of a version of it in the Bible Journaling Made Simple workbook. And all month long, I am sharing pages over in the Facebook group that I've painted in this book. And I'll do a couple of those here on the old YouTube as well. And I included this drawing in case you wanted to try drawing a boat and doing that in your Bible, but practicing it here first in the workbook since this is pretty close to, if not exactly, Bible paper. It's hard to figure out whether or not it's actually Bible paper, but it really does operate the same kind of way. So I'm using some Daniel Smith paints out of this little mini set that I have. And the colors don't really matter all that much. I wanted you, you to see the brush strokes. What I'm doing is starting with the brush off the paper, laying it down flat, and then lifting it up again. So with the water, I get points on either side. So I get thin and then thick and then thin. And with waves, the closer they get to you, the bigger and fatter they are. And then as they get off into the distance, they get smaller and lighter and closer together. So that gives you that illusion that there's water far away coming closer. You also want to try to be careful and see if you can leave some whites, which is always really hard. It's one of the toughest things to do in watercolor. But I wanted to have that water right along the base of the boat. So I went carefully along that using this lighter blue so that I could get that work done and make sure I save that white before I go in with a darker color. I'm going to put more color underneath of where the boat is because that's basically going to be the boat reflection going down. But there can be some open areas as well and doesn't have to be completely solid in there because you want to have that sparkle on the surface of the water. And you can throw a couple of different blues into your, your water. It doesn't have to be all just one. I'm going to even drop in a little bit of green just for fun because it's practice. This is the place to practice in this book. So I'm going to zoom a little quicker here on this because the difference between going much darker like I'm doing here is seen easier when you're watching it quickly because you can watch it develop faster. So get an idea in your mind what it looks like now. And as I start adding more pigment, and I'm not just doing layers of it, I'm doing thicker pigments. So I'm using less water and the, the paint is just getting thicker so that it starts getting to this really dark color. And now I'm getting a real difference in the color of the water. So I have some areas that are really dark, some areas that are really light, and some that are in the middle. But I'm keeping most of the reflection of the boat down in that, basically the column from the edge of the boat going downward. Now there's all kinds of things you could learn about doing reflections, but this is just a sort of simple way to think about it, keep those reflections directly under the boat. So now I'm going to drop in a little bit of the brown color into all of this wet paint since it's all still soaking wet. And that's going to give me a little bit of the idea that that's the boat reflection just by pulling in some of the brown. And while that starts to dry, I'm going to work on the boat. In this little palette, I don't have a dark brown. So I am going to fake it. I'm going to add some of this indigo blue that I had in the water and add that to my boat. With watercolors, you can mix all kinds of colors to get all kinds of other colors. And you can mix them on a palette or on a plate or something, or you can just mix them on the paper, which is what I'm doing. So I'm basically putting extra paint down in these areas that I want to get darker on the inside of the boat and then dropping some of that indigo blue in them. And if it starts to feel too blue and it doesn't feel like brown anymore, then you just drop more of the brown into it. So I'm going to finish up adding more of the indigo first. And I'm looking at the picture in the Bible as a little bit of a reference to know where the light areas are. But basically, there's a light area all around the edge of the boat because the light's hitting the surface and then on those two seats. And so I'm kind of spreading the color around because I started getting all the wrinkles. And once it was all dry, I ironed it, put a piece of paper over top of it so I could iron it and smooth it out a little bit. And I'm going to show you how to repair some of what happens. 
is you end up with these rivulets. And if you've ironed it when the paper is wet at all, then you get those little tiny spots that sort of act weird. And you can go through with a brush and move it. On Bible paper, the pigment will still reactivate, so you can just take a damp brush and go over it. But what I'm going to do on the boat itself, which is, you know, kind of one of my fun funnest thing to do is clean up my drawing or clean up the painting by going around and doing a drawing over top of it. So I'm taking a micron pen and going over each of the outlines that I want to have on here that I want to be firm. And then in the areas where it's supposed to be shadow, I could go in and paint that again and add another layer of that. Or I could just add some hash marks and fill that in with pen, not solid, but add enough that it looks like I sketched it in there and it will look more like a drawing than a painting. And it cleans up some of those edges because with watercolor, it's hard to get those edges to look really super, especially on Bible paper that gets wrinkled. So then you can add all kinds of other details to it. I can add a little bit more outlines to a few areas that need help. I can add a stripe on the side of the boat as it was done in my Bible page. And then I can take a white pen and write the name of the boat on there. Now the side of my boat in this big one was not as dark as the one on the Bible page, so the words didn't show up. But of course, that's exactly why we have the Bible Journaling Made Simple workbook, so we can practice these kind of things and figure out how dark the color needs to be in order for the words to show up. So there is a version of this boat, and it's in the Bible Journaling Made Simple workbook. I'd love to see yours. You can join the Facebook group and share your work with the rest of us. And I will see you again next week. Don't forget to scroll back one video to see the new class that just got launched over on my teaching site. And I will see you guys again next week with another video. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you.